When you look out at the ocean, perhaps the only thing you see is blue. Fortunately, not everyone is satisfied by that. Some oceanographers, like Frederick Grassley, find great beauty and paradigm-shifting insights in the diversity of worms and bacteria in mud at the bottom of the ocean. A native of Bay Village, Ohio, Frederick Grassley grew up without an ocean in sight. Luckily, Lake Erie was nearby, where he first learned to explore underwater. When I was, um, I think it was in junior high, I was very interested in life in the oceans, and I read Jacques Cousteau's first book about diving. But he didn't get to the ocean until later, as a zoology student at Yale where an instructor arranged for him to go to Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Cape Cod. I spent the summer with a geologist on the outer Cape, and so I took crab samples there and studied the animals. Woods Hole convinced me that I wanted to be an oceanographer. Grassley went on to Duke for his PhD and did his first postdoctoral work on coral reefs in Australia. There he began to realize just how little people knew about life in certain ocean habitats. The diversity of life in the coral heads on coral reefs is vast. Nobody had any idea about that. They were all focused on the corals and the big things that you see, the really brilliantly colored things, but uh, the little animals, the worms that are down in the coral heads, nobody was looking at. Even when they were looking, the right tools didn't exist. So for Grassley, necessity sparked innovation. The boundary that you use to separate the animals from sediments was one millimeter for a long time. I had always done my work with 300 micron sieves. That adds a whole dimension in terms of the diversity of life that you, you find from the sediments. One of my uh, favorite memories of Fred dates back to the years that we worked at Woods Hole Oceanographic. He would design on the back of napkins all these different types of equipment. Deep down inside, Fred is a frustrated engineer. The smaller sieves that Grassley adopted have now become the standard deep sea work. Grassley returned to Woods Hole in 1969, this time as a member of the staff. In 1977, the first underwater volcanoes, or hydrothermal vents, were discovered on the Pacific Ocean floor off the coast of the Galapagos Islands. When Grassley heard about the vents, he led a pioneering expedition there and was amazed by what he found. Seeing the black smokers for the first time is, is really amazing. There's so much energy there. The animals are, are, are spectacular. You see these red plume worms, and then you look somewhere else, you look a little more, more closely, and you see nestled down in the cracks, there are mussels. <laughs> Grassley had discovered a whole new kind of ecosystem no one had imagined that life could exist one and a half miles below the sea surface without sunlight and under such harsh conditions. Temperatures at the vents can reach as high as 450 degrees Celsius. Grassley determined that this marine life had to be chemosynthetic, meaning it lives off chemicals from inside the earth rather than from sunlight. The discovery overturned the conventional idea that sunlight is always the main source of energy for life. Chemosynthetic organisms may even give us clues to whether life can exist on other planets. People judge the diversity of a place by what they can see. And of course, things living in mud, they just don't count them as important life. But in fact, the deep ocean is, is the greatest reservoir of, of life. After 20 years at Woods Hole, Grassley made a difficult yet important move from Cape Cod to New Jersey. Usually when people are moving, they sort of bargain for, um, I don't know, a higher salary or something like that. Uh, Fred was bargaining for the wherewithal to build an institute. And that he did. Grassley built a world-famous department of marine and coastal sciences at Rutgers University. One of his many contributions has been the Census of Marine Life, a 10-year program that has gathered scientists from 70 nations around the world to undertake the ambitious task of cataloging every living thing in the ocean. I think understanding the diversity of the ocean, whether it's on the continental shelf or in the deep sea, uh, it makes people have a better appreciation of, of what they might lose. The 2009 Benjamin Franklin Medal in 
Earth and Environmental Science is presented to J. Frederick Grassley for pioneering research leading to our understanding of the unique ecosystems near volcanic vents at the sea floor. The first ever found fueled by chemical energy from the Earth's interior instead of sunlight.